Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Today we'll talk about dollhouse furniture made from recycled materials. And even if you're not interested in dollhouse furniture, here's why I think this episode is still relevant to you. There are many items that we purchase that we could make ourselves, and the act of making them could give those items much more value. Let's think of an item that you use every day, perhaps a shopping bag, maybe a cookie, a scarf, or a bathroom mat. And if you make that item from recycled materials, materials, you get four benefits. You learn how to make something and reduce your stress during the making. You remove the guilt of throwing items in the trash. And often handmade items are made with more care and are less likely to break. And handmade gifts show a lot of love. When it comes to dollhouse furniture, I would think it means much more to a child when you made the items. Or even better, it's even more meaningful when you make the items with the child. There are so many tutorials that show how to do it step by step on YouTube or in courses on Udemy or Skillshare. And if you don't have woodworking or sewing machines, you can look for local community centers or sewing centers where you can take a class or rent a machine. So what got me thinking about dollhouses? My children are too old to play with them anymore. And even though many adults make dollhouses as a hobby, that's not one of my many hobbies. I started thinking about dollhouses when I visited the Renwick Gallery in Washington, D.C. There is currently an exhibit of dollhouses made by an artist in the 1940s. Her name is Frances Glessner Lee, and she was the first female police captain in the United States. She crafted these dollhouses as teaching tools for homicide investigators. They are mini crime scenes. In the exhibit, you read the witness statements and then you evaluate the evidence in the dollhouse. While this was a fascinating exhibit all on its own, of course, as I was there, my mind wandered to the world of creative reuse. And I was trying to figure out what Frances used to make her furniture and accessories. I read that she knit tiny linens and clothing with pins that was very hard on her eyesight. When I started to research dollhouse furniture from recycled materials, I quickly went down a rabbit hole. I learned there are many ways that people make dollhouse furniture today. And of course, most of these do not use recycled materials. But just looking at their work can be inspiring for someone who wants to use recycled materials when making dollhouse furniture or accessories. Some of the methods that people use are, for example, very high tech some people are printing their designs on the 3D printers. There is a whole bunch of dollhouse makers that are architecture enthusiasts. And in fact, there are kits that they buy similar to those that you might buy for making model cars or model airplanes. And to learn about some of them really interesting kits and also people who are designing the kits, I recommend the blogs Call of the Small by Christine Ferreira or Modern Mini Houses by Megan Horbecker. There are also people who search for items in dollar stores and then transform them into dollhouse accessories. For example, I watched a video of someone who took apart a plastic baby rattle that they got in a dollar store and that made two doll-sized bowls. There are people who specialize in sculpting dollhouse furniture and accessories from bakeable modeling clay. And there are people who use printables and scrapbook paper to make dollhouse furniture and accessories. Now, some of these artists build models to play with with their children, but many do it because they specialize in miniatures for photography or videography. And this is, in fact, a trend on social media. They are sometimes called miniaturists. There are apps on your phone that can make regular life photos look like photos of miniature models. There's a whole genre of cooking shows where everything is done in miniature, sometimes cooking on stoves heated by candles. For those, I would check out the YouTube channels Miniature Space or Miniature Cucina. 
while all of those dollhouse makers are fascinating, of course, I wanted to find people who use recycled materials, and they do exist. And here are three of my favorite YouTube channels who focus on that medium. The first is Simple Kids Crafts. Her creations are particularly ingenious. For example, she shows how to make a washing machine where you actually pour in water and wash doll clothes. It's made from a rectangular shaped shampoo bottle. She has another video where she shows how to make many kitchen appliances from plastic caps, including a blender, coffee maker, rice cooker, and griddle. Another YouTube channel which focuses on dollhouse crafts is My Froggy Stuff, and it has 1.6 million subscribers. It's a mother and daughter team, and their dollhouses are created mostly for Barbie-sized dolls. And most of their designs involve cardboard, paint, and scrapbook paper. But some designs do involve creative reuse of plastic trash. I was most impressed by a toilet that they made using a dental floss container for the tank of the toilet and a white lid of a coffee made container for the basin. The YouTube channel called The Square to Spare teaches how to make very realistic looking musical instruments from popsicle sticks, including a beautiful acoustic guitar and violin. She also designed paving stones for her houses from egg cartons and a typewriter where the keys are made from toothpicks. Now, here's a quick rundown of ideas that I saw made from recycled materials for dollhouse items, and I will link to all of these in the show notes. Joanne's Minis, for example, makes colorful bottles out of tiny cylindrical tubes that are from broken Christmas lights. Vince House takes large plastic coffee or ice cream containers and uses his experience in upholstery to make couches and armchairs. Vavoom Vintage makes Pyrex dishes from the blister packs of medication. Miss Cutie Pie lays down hardwood flooring from popsicle sticks. Shades of Tangerine takes that annoying junk mail and makes miniature boxed food items from the pictures that she cuts out of the junk mail. And Doll Houses and Minis makes fancy plates by cutting out images from magazines and mod podging them onto foam or plastic caps. Now you might be wondering, what have I done in the realm of doll houses and creative reuse? Well, when I was a kid, my sister and I were obsessed with strawberry shortcake dolls. My grandmother taught us how to knit, and we made sleeping bags for all our dolls. My grandmother also gave us two tiny doll beds made from sunlight dish soap bottles with a crocheted trim. I found a pattern for how to make this, which I will feature in the show notes. My own children were more interested in dinosaurs. They loved to play a game outside where they would give all their dinosaurs a spa day, which involved rubbing lotions on the dinosaurs and then giving them a bath. Making a bathtub for your dolls is an easy first project. It really works with any large plastic container. I will link to instructions on making a doll bathtub from a lotion bottle that I saw on a blog called Pequeñesis. If you have made dollhouse furniture or accessories from recycled materials, please let me know at trashimagination at gmail.com. Maybe you have something your parents or grandparents made for you, like my crocheted doll bed. You can see images of the different designs that I found on a Pinterest board that I made as well. And I just want to point out, this is my first episode recorded with a new microphone that I got for Christmas from my mother-in-law. Thank you, Marilyn. I hope you enjoy a new level of sound quality. I will continue to record in my fantastic home sound studio, i.e. my closet. And if you want to see the dollhouses I mentioned at the Renwick Gallery, the exhibit is there until January 28, 2018. If you miss it, you can see the dollhouses at the Baltimore Medical Examiner's Office. I will link to a podcast about the exhibit done by Side Door, a Smithsonian podcast. 
be sure to tell a friend about this podcast for a more inspired 2018. And until next time, may you see trash as a source of dollhouse furniture and accessories in your life. (laughs) 